Hello there. Hello, hello, my paper crafting makers. As I get situated here, feel free to hop on, join me, say hello, let me know where you're viewing from. If you're viewing this as a replay, hashtag replay. My name is Dawn Borchette. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm a Addicted to everything, paper, ink, stamps, and more. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I um, was just on a ladder. That's a scary thing. Well, not really a tall ladder, but <laughs> I'm cleaning out my, um, my room here, making room for new things. So, yeah, scary stuff, I tell you. It's like a um, construction zone. Anyway, welcome, everybody. Again, my name is Dawn Bergette. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And welcome to Sunday Crafternoon with Dawn and my mini class. Hey, Evelyn, hello. How are you, my teammate? It is good to see you this morning, or actually this afternoon. I am still a little bit muddy, yes. <laughs> We went a riding. Hey, Kristen, how are you? I'm going to hopefully be able to see um, comments here. I'm trying to set things up a little differently, but I don't know. We'll see if it works out. Nonetheless, I'm glad that you're here. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you all so much. So once again, say hi as you join in. So um, a couple of things to remind you guys of before we do get started. First of all, as you probably have figured out, if you're following me at all between Facebook, my blog, and also, um, see, Facebook, blog, where else? YouTube, <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. I'm everywhere. I'm like a bad penny. I just kind of show up. So anyway, um, Retiring lists are out, our last chance list of retiring items for both our annual catalog for Stampin' Up! along with our mini catalog. They were updated the day I went live, which I think was on Thursday. All my days are blending together. They're mushing, right? Um, I'm sure you can relate. Anyway, so I just posted updated lists in my group and here on my page. If anybody needs an updated list, and you'll see Stampin' Up! went ahead and teeny tiny at the top, it says it's been updated. I had to write it so I can see it. <laughs> but anyway, so both lists have been posted for you. They are updated lists because if you guys did follow along with my live on Thursday before they did this, um, I, I knew that there were some discrepancies there. So um, hopefully that will answer any questions that you have. But if you do have any, of course, make sure to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you out. Now, just remember that these lists do not go live with the discounted pricing until April the 4th, which is on Tuesday. So if there's something that you really, really want on this list and you're not much of a gambler, I know I'm not. I prefer just to get it and be at ease. But um, if you really want it, just grab it. Seriously, grab it. Because I think once these lists go live, it's going to be a little chaos. <laughs> and I say that with a smile, but oh boy. So anyway, um, this right here, you know what? Today's April. I need to switch this. So ignore this. Oh dear. So if you shop at my store, don't worry about the host code. I can always fix that. Okay, so let's let's do this. I forgot to print that. That's I knew I was forgetting something. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, yeah, one of those mornings. I think I'm still have mud in the brain. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention to you guys as far as all this retiring stuff, and I know you may have heard it from me before, but just in case, maybe not. Let's see where I've really marked up my book. Okay, so these colors right here that have an X just above them, they are retiring. So with that being said as well, if you love a color, 
Get some on you first. Ah, Kristen. <laughs> she knows me. She knows me so well. <laughs> the rig was muddy. I was not so much. Um, I'm okay. I'm just a girly girl. I'll just admit it. I am. And um, if I can avoid the mud, I do. But it's a lot of fun. It sure is going through those mud puddles. And we hit a few biggies too. They were deep, deep puddles. Um, anyway, so, um, we do have colors that are retiring. And with that being said, if you guys have an ink pad, but you don't have an ink refill, oh my gosh, grab it. In fact, my rule of thumb is if I buy an ink pad, I always buy an ink refill always. And I always team it up with it. So it has the same chemical mixture. I'm going to say, you guys will know what I mean. It matches. It's a matchy matchy set. They go together and you're guaranteed that it's going to work. Um, don't try to ink up your ink pads with an old ink refill. Because if you do and if it's not the same chemical makeup, I guess I'll call it, if this will make sense, um, you could do some harm to your ink pads. Okay, and I don't want you to have that happen because then you're upset that your ink pad isn't working and it's looking a little goofy and it has the measles or something. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, stock up on all the things, whether it is um, an extra ink pad or maybe an ink refill, the cardstock, anything that you love with the ribbon of these particular colors, because all of that will be retiring. Just to let you know, though, I'm so happy. Fresh Freesia. I got my wish. It is staying and it's going to be in our color family of these four colors. Pretty excited about that. So, yeah. So once again, along with these four in colors that will not be back, we have mellow. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> my tongue is tied this morning. Mango Melody, Bermuda Bay, uh, Pacific Point. We also have Mary Merlot and um, 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 Soft Suede and Sahara Sand. Also, Rich Razzleberry is leaving. Blushing Bride, So Saffron, Pear Pizzazz, and Mint Macaron. So, yeah. If you guys love them, stock up. Stock up fast and furious. Okay. So, I think I covered what I wanted to with that. We do have, if you guys could figure out, when we did go through the retiring list, the last chance list, you can kind of figure out if it's not retiring, then what is happening? It's staying. It's staying, right? So you're going to see some of these products into the new catalog, which is really exciting. And I was actually surprised how much in our mini catalog is going to carry over into our new annual catalog. So... That's kind of cool. I like that because there's a lot of good stuff in there. All right. Also, before we get started, a couple of other things I wanted to talk about with you guys. Some upcoming events here at the Chalet. First of all, on Friday, April the 7th, we will have um, Sip and Stamp over at Starbucks. A free craft that you can make. That is 12 noon to 2 p.m. on Friday, April 7th. The first Friday of the month. And that's at the Ludington, Michigan Starbucks. And then on Thursday, April 13th, right before I go on vacay, we're going to have our creative card class. That's at 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock, or 6.30. And it's some um, beautiful flowery cards working with a double suite that part of is carrying over. And that's the Regency Park goodies. And, hmm. I've already got it all packed up. I was cutting and chopping paper yesterday for it. I have a couple spots yet available. So if you would like to attend the April 13th Creative Card Class, contact me and I will make sure to put you down. It's $25 or free with a minimum order during class. As we get into April, on Thursday, April 4th, thir April, May, Oh my goodness, May, 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 <laughs> Thursday, May the 4th, may the 4th be with you, <gasps> yeah, that's how I'll remember that, 
<laughs> we're having our catalog kickoff. It's going to replace Creative Card Class. Basically, you're going to do the same type of thing. We'll make four different cards, and we're going to use four different products. And they're all going to be from the new catalog. Brand new, you guys. So, um, catalog kickoff on Thursday, May the 4th. And I'm going to offer this at 10 a.m., 1 p.m., or 6.30. We're going to do it just the way we normally do. And again, $25 are free with a minimum order. Bring your shopping list along with you. Just saying. <laughs> and then on Friday, May the 5th, May 5th, isn't that, that's like Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, like party time, right? Um, on Friday, May the 5th. We will again have Starbucks Sip and Stamp over at the Ludington, Michigan Starbucks, 12 noon to 2 p.m. I'm keeping it very consistent. The first Friday of the month, 12 to 2. The only month I think is going to change is uh, September because that's Labor Day weekend. And the manager has asked me to not have it that day. So we're going to bump it back a week in September. But that's a long ways away. We don't want to wish summer away, right? <laughs> Also, that whole week is going to be crazy. On Saturday, May the 6th, I have my BOGO event. This is where I price everything as it is in the catalog. It's not a garage sale. This is better. So I price things. They're either gently used or never used products. I price it as they are in the catalog. And then when you check out, I'll give you a coupon for the amount that you spent. And then what you do with that coupon is you just go nuts and make your long shopping list with the new annual catalog that will just be live. And um, someone's saying hi. Hey, Lonnie. <laughs> I am looking forward to seeing you. I miss you. So you'll get this coupon for the amount that you spent at the BOGO. This is a live event at Amber Township Hall in Scottville, Michigan. And you'll shop with that coupon. You can go ahead and shop over the coupon. In fact, I encourage you to because it's a coupon. That's what we do, right? <laughs> it's a discount, basically, on your order from the new catalog. So I take the amount that you spent, I subtract it. So all you do is take care of the overage, the shipping, and the tax. It's then shipped to me, and then you come and pick it up. It's that easy. It's awesome. It's so much fun. I think it's my biggest event of the year. It's very, very popular. Um, and with that being said, tell all your friends and bring a car full. There's a lot of, uh, there's generous parking over there. And um, it's going to be fun. And my products need a new home. Um, also, and I'm going to email about this. So if you're not on my email list, just above this live, we are going to be sending some information on In Color Club. This is going to start in May, and it ends in September. We have five In Colors, so one color a month if you sign up for In Color Club. Oh, gosh. Hey, I'll be, I'll be needing some help, Lon. I'll appreciate that very much. I appreciate you. Um, so In Color Club is going to celebrate everything in colors. So every month you're going to get a different end color. This helps so that you can collect all five of the end colors and all the things in colors. Okay, for an example, the eight and a half by 11 paper pack, the ink pad, the ink refill, the marker, because we have a set of five markers. Uh, so I send one marker a month. Um, that's the water-based marker. Then we have the Stampin' Blends and we have a bolt of ribbon. I make a handmade card, and I usually try to put something a little extra in there. We'll see how that goes. I'm still s trying to work out the details, and I should have an email out no later than tomorrow about In Color Club. So if you are interested in it, you once you say you're in, you're in for all five months. Okay? And then you'll get a package every month. So it breaks it down. I'm thinking it's going to be right about $70. That'll cover shipping to me, then divvying out the product, and then shipping out to you. And you're, then you get a package every month. And then I bill it the first of the month through PayPal. And um, you receive your package a couple weeks later. So I would say right about the 25th of the month. 
So, um, yeah. All right. So it's really exciting. And I did it last year. And I really would like to have a minimum of five people. Since we have five in colors, it makes it easy to divvy it out. So let me know if you're interested. Also, just a gentle reminder about Paper Pumpkin. Um, today is the third. Is it the third? Yeah. Nope. It's the second today. <laughs> See, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Constant. What is wrong with me? So anyway, Paper Pumpkin, if you'd like to get this particular kit, please sign up by the 10th with me. We're going to get this little divider system in the April kit, which I'm really excited about. Because if, if you... Um, <laughs> go ahead and talk to Elliot, Lon. Um, if you've been receiving Paper Pumpkin with me for a while then you know that um, you get a collection of these little ink spots. So this is gonna be awesome. It's like recycling your box and giving it a really good purpose at the same time to have a place to store all these cute little guys. So anyway, um, the kit is called, I wanna say the best is yet to come, but it's called All the Little Things. But the best is yet to come, isn't it? I believe so. So anyway, All the Little Things and so if you want the April kit, you need to sign up by the 10th of April to receive it. And just another gentle reminder about our online exclusives. So if you're wanting any of these goodies, make sure to look for them online at my online store. Um, as a matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna set this here and I'm gonna wait and close this out tonight. Even though it says March, I know it's we're into April, we're going to close it out later tonight because I haven't yet. I'm behind. <laughs> I'm all thrown off. Okay. And then also, I am permitted to show these to you now. So I just wanted to mention it to you that there is um, a couple of tools that we get from Stampin' Up! each year. And this is one of them. I have posted it in both my group and here on my page. So that if you want, as you receive your catalog, this is really cool. So as you receive your catalog and you start looking through the catalog, and by the way, it's awesome. You guys are going to love it. It's beautiful. But when isn't it a beautiful catalog, right? But anyway, what they've done is they've broken up by page areas of the book what colors they have used on the projects. So it's just kind of a handy little something something. And like I said, I've posted it and I've pinned it and right here on my page and also in my community group. So if you guys are wanting it, I know I don't have the best printer, but it gives me an idea. And it's nice because they actually name every single color as well. So if you have a printer like mine that isn't true color, it still helps. And I think this is kind of a cool tool. So feel free to print that if you wish. There's also a color coach that I've given a link to as well. And it is also pinned. So if you, you love things like that, I, I love things in my binder. I'm, I'm a nerd, you guys. I'm a true paper nerd. But I love those as well. So the color coach is a lot of fun. And years ago, for those of you who've been around for a long time, used to have the color coach on like a like a ring similar to this. Um, yeah. So anyway, just fun tools to have. Okie dokie. Let's see here. Are we ready to get started? Let's rock and roll. I have... I have an obsession with something that is retiring. And that is Greatest Journey. Greatest Journey. Let's see, how come I, I'm like all off here, Kitty Wampus. I must have bumped my phone. There we go. That drives me crazy, just saying. I'm very, yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, so Greatest Journey, this particular suite, collection, whatever you want to call it, is retiring. And it's found in our mini catalog. I first, and I know I told you this before, this was not on my radar. And then all of a sudden I started to play with it a little bit. I gave it a chance and I just fell in love with it. 
So today I have four cards that we're going to make with it. Um, we're going to go from the easier to the more advanced card, so to speak, if you want to call it that. But um, we're going to do some layers and some fun things with it. So I hope that you enjoy it today. And if you're loving this at all, especially after you see what I put together today, I can't imagine you not, this paper does all the work. It is so pretty and it really makes your projects pop. Hey, Gretchen, hi, thanks for joining us. So make sure to grab this, okay? You're gonna love it, trust me, you're gonna love it. And I don't know if it's discounted or not. I didn't take the, a look at that. Um, but anyway, it's quite an amazing suite of product. Also in the suite and is not carrying over are the groups of three twine. What is this called? The three twine combo pack. And I believe this is Garden Green, uh, Coastal Cabana, and Pumpkin Pie. And then also something that's retiring that I've been using are these enamel sticker icons. And I've colored one. I was showing this the last time I used this product in a live. You can color these with your Stampin' Blends because it's a non-porous surface. And these work beautifully on non-porous surfaces. They dry really fast, too, because they are alcohol-based. Um, what else? What else? Also, this is the stamp set. Whoops. I have things falling like an avalanche. And this is the set of dies. So many fun things from the jogger to the hiker with the lantern and the bicyclist or mountain biker, actually. Then you have a tent. You have clouds. This little guy right here you're going to see is one of my favorites. The last card we're going to make today um, uses this. This is a mountain. <laughs> and I was showing that the last live I did. And there's a card that's inspired by Cindy Schuster that I'm going to make today that I just fell in love with. Cindy works as, I believe, like a concept artist over at Stampin' Up. Um, also, you can cut your trees out. And what else is there? The little moon. All kinds of fun things. There's a lot of dyes packed in with this bundle right here. And then, um, in case you're wondering... I know we're not creating with this today, but we are with the dies. So there's a die in here that I used on a card. And I wanted to show you. So this is in the Sentimental Park bundle. This is carrying over. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm so excited. And I've been using these a lot, so forgive me. They're all over the place. But I'm actually, I've used this right here. I've tried to die cut everything in advance, so this is why I'm showing you guys everything right now. So you know where I've gotten it. Because I do bounce around sometimes using other dies, you know, mix the family. <laughs> so that is where I did get that particular shape, and I love it. I love this bundle. And also, another product that I'm using today that is retiring are these right here, the rectangular stitched dies. Oh my gosh, I can, I am like, this is one of the two things that completely shock me that is retiring. I'm like, how can you do this to me? Like, I love these, so I'm keeping my set. I am, I can't, I will not get rid of these. These are like, they're just, they're just standard shapes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I get a little emotional over my products. I do. It's really hard for me to, to um, I don't know, to get, you know what I mean? To go, move on, so to speak. <laughs> I'm, I'm attached to these. So nonetheless, if you guys have not gotten these, make sure to grab them up. It's item number, if I can find it here, and I've covered it, of course, um, 148551 is the item number for the rectangular stitched framelit. Well, these are older. Maybe that's why they're retiring. Oh, I see why. Mine are from Sussex originally. Shh. But yeah, Stampin' Up! and Sussex cut ties. So anyway, they are retiring. 
and if you don't have them, grab them. Get these off the last chance list. They're amazing. What else? Oh, I know, I know, I know what I wanted to tell you about. So, um, let's see here. Put those aside. Something I wanted to talk to you guys about are water-based markers. So this is the set of five uh, ink colors that are retiring. And where did my other one go? Hmm. Oh, 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 it's right here. Because I'm going to be using it. Okay, if you want to get on things I'm sad about leaving is polish pink. Like, I'm going to miss this color big time. I love it. Anyway, so these are the set of five ink color markers that are obviously retiring because, whoops, these four are leaving us. And he will be staying. But what I wanted to talk to you about is if you have our full set of Marvy markers, at least I think they call them Marvy markers yet, um... Something's going to change with all of our markers. So we have the, what do you want to call this? The brush tip, which I love. And usually the brush tip is all I use because our fine tip is almost so fine that, whoops, it's really hard to even write with. In fact, sometimes my fine tip doesn't always work the best, I'll have to admit. So they're improving our markers the water-based markers these are not the blends the blends look like this so just to compare between the two so with our water-based markers we're going to get this tip replaced to more of a bullet point so it's actually going to be a little thicker than this and i hear that they work so much better which i'm really really happy about so just a heads up that if you're like, well, I never really liked half of the marker because the tip on it did not work, they're getting changed, and I'm really happy about that change. So if you do get them, or as you get the set of five of the markers, you're going to notice that. Okay, are we, are we ready to get started? I am. <laughs> Let me grab the first couple things here. I'm going to need... This is the card we're going to make, and I'm going to need Starry Sky ink, and I will need my Stampin' Blends. All right, okay, I think I have everything, along with my bits and pieces. So this card right here, super, super easy. Um, I am using, in fact, let's switch this around here. Okay. I'm using a piece of Starry Sky paper. Isn't this like the prettiest blue? And I'm not a blue girl. I'm really not. I'm more into pinks and purples and, you know, obviously you can see my shirt. Um, but anyway, I do love this blue. I think it's just so pretty and so rich. So I cut this piece at five and a half by eight and a half, and I scored at four and a quarter. For the inside piece for the liner, it's a piece of basic white, and this is cut at four by five and a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and take my seal, and we're just going to put this inside the card, get it right out of the way. Just like that. For the outside of the card, I have this piece of DSP. Isn't that pretty? The stars, I love it. And this is cut at three by four. And then I also have a piece of basic white. And this is cut at two by three and a half. And then the blend colors are polished pink, pumpkin pie. And I did grab Bermuda Bay. Um, I don't think we have Calypso Coral, or I just don't have it, one of the two. So before we get started, what I want to do is use this little stamp here that's in the set, and it's like little stars. I think it's really cool. And even though you can't really see it a whole lot, give a close-up of my sample, I did stamp that all the way around the edge, just to give it a little extra something. Be right back. I'm going to close my door. 
before the dogs bark. Okay, <laughs> I just know that someone is approaching to come home. I can hear a side-by-side -side pulling in my driveway, and I know they're going to get really excited. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and fill this in. I just thought it needed a little extra something, and sometimes I'll do this just so that it's not a naked piece of paper. Does that make sense? <laughs> Like I said, you can't really say it a whole lot, but it just is. All right, and then I'm going to take my white piece here and, oops, I shouldn't have shut that. We need that yet. And I'm going to take the sentiment with adventure on it and stamp this. In fact, I'm gonna grab my piercing mat. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed, especially with the photopolymer stamps, they're a little more sensitive because they don't have that cushion like the red rubber does. And so if you do use something cushy like our piercing mat, I think this is only like five or $6, and it's a lifesaver, especially if you have, I know my table, I don't think is completely, perfectly flat. And if it's not, with these especially, you can come up with some really wonky stamping. I know, technical term there. All right, now I think I'm done with Starry Sky ink. We're gonna go ahead and attach this direct to the card with seal. Look at the back of that, isn't that pretty? And we're going to center it ish. <laughs> we do a lot of ishes here. Okay. And then before I stick this on, we're gonna grab these. The enamel sticker icons. And I was really perplexed on what to do with these until the light bulb went on. And I'm like, oh, duh, I can color those. So why not, right? So we're going to take the trees and we're gonna color this guy up really quick with the Bermuda Bay. And then I have, let's, oh, nope, nope. Let's see here, I need, we're gonna use pumpkin pie on this little campfire here. think they're kind of fun to color and I never would would have thought to do this and I think it was at my online store yep I was checking out my online store for myself and I seen a picture of and maybe it was this card because I know I was casing a couple of things right from stamping up and I love the fact that they suggested I was like oh my gosh yeah duh those would take that ink perfectly so we're gonna go ahead and Oops, that's a little off. And then we took the campfire and stuck this one on. And then the compass, which I'm not born with. You know how some people are born with a compass? I have absolutely no sense of direction. I can get lost in a paper bag, just saying. <laughs> And then, um, let's see here. Look at that, a fresh new page of uh, dimensionals. Makes me so happy. And there we are. Peel these little guys off, we'll attach it to the card and we will be done with card number one. Just like that. Oops. And there we go. Card one is complete. What do you guys think of that one? Easy enough, right? I like easy. Okay. This is really bugging me. Why? There we go. I'm very linear. When my camera's off, I feel off. All right. Next 
card. So this one here, I actually have two samples. So I need your help and I need you guys to vote. So are you ready? Get your fingers on the keyboard. Ready? Okay, so here is the same layout, but two different colors. Would you guys rather see, oh my gosh, what color is this? This is Soft Sea Foam or Coastal Cabana is your card base. And then we'll go from there. Soft Sea Foam, just type SS or Coastal Cabana, CC. Ready, set, tight. <laughs> I know I'm like a couple seconds delayed, so it's really weirdly awkward. So I have bits for both. So I'm ready to go, depending on which one you vote on. What do you think? All right, Evelyn says CC, Coastal Cabana. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to go for it. There we are. Can you hear my dogs going ape? <laughs> oh my goodness sakes. <laughs> I almost need to play some background music or something to cover it up because they really go bananas. Alrighty. So, Coastal Cabana it is. So first of all, we cut the piece of, I think this is Coastal Cabana. And this is, no, sorry, this is Pool Party. And that is Coastal Cabana. And then Bermuda Bay is darker yet. But anyway, nonetheless, we know what we meant, right? The lighter blue color. <laughs> oh, golly. Get my little notes here. Okay, so first of all, we cut the Pool Party piece at five and a half by eight and a half. And we scored at five four and a quarter. Um, this is going to be a landscape card. And then I used this beautiful DSP. The back side is really pretty too, isn't it? But we cut this down and this is, what is this at? One by, no, 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 that's not it. We're going to measure it just because. Five and a quarter by two. Two by five and a quarter. And we're gonna go ahead and adhere this down right directly to the card base. And center it-ish. And then this piece is gonna be kind of kitty wampus and this is cut at four and a quarter by three, three by four and a quarter. And we're gonna go ahead and just adhere this with a little bit of seal and it's gonna be a little kitty wampus off, I don't know, off kilter. What would you call that? What would, what would you guys call that? Off center, off kilter, I don't know, something. Anyway, and then for this piece here, this is basic white and I've cut it at four and a quarter by three. So same size, and I'm gonna stick it down like so-ish. Well, we're done. But first, we need to stamp on it. And I'm gonna get a piece of scrap paper, because I just, anytime I get ink on my piercing mat, it doesn't dry, and then I get it all over the place. Have you guys ever experienced that? It's awful. Okay, grab, forgot I needed the trees. So we're gonna take that. I love the way these adhere to our blocks. So easy, easy peasy. And what we're going to do is take shaded spruce and we're going to stamp full strength and step stamp off and you're going to see that on the sample it just gives it a little more depth even though you can't see a lot of it i love the look of that so we're going to stamp and then stamp again so second generation we call it 
and then stamp. Oops. And then for this, because the ink wasn't even evenly stamped the first time, we're going to go ahead and stamp that again. And there we are. Just like that. Just for a background. And then we're still going to need this, and we're also going to use pool party. I had to think about that. I'm looking at it and I'm questioning myself. <laughs> what color was that? All right. So with that, I've already, and I actually I cut two of these. So in case I made a mistake, I'm all set. I know myself so well, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're going to take the shaded spruce and the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and stamp this right on this stitched shape this whole sentiment here and make sure that it's somewhat oh my gosh you know what I'm gonna do It's the pressure. I'm gonna put this on a bigger block. It's easier for me to see it when I stamp and center the silly bugger. There we go. So up towards the top. And there we go. But as you notice, we did great in a different color. So I wanted to show you guys something, and I haven't done this in a while, and I, I do love the way this looks. Usually I'm in a hurry to make a card and I don't take the time to do it. But I'm going to take the ink off of that stamp that we just used. I have a piece of scrap paper. I'm going to set this aside for a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and, yeah. I'm going to say, I hope I didn't need this for something else. Oh no. All right, so I stamped it in the pool party. I'm going to take my paper snips. I actually didn't do this ahead of time because I did want to show this to you. Because some of you may, you know, you may be kind of new and stuff and not realize and think, oh, that's really cool. Like, I never would have thought of that. I'm gonna go ahead. we're gonna cut this I am not the best at doing this um, some people love to cut and fussy cut I am NOT one of those people I don't have very good patience pants <laughs> so this is the extent of it all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and attach that like so pretty cool right so where did my adhesive go there we are Stick this down. And then we're going to take one of these lovely little shapes. I want to use the tree again. We're going to stick it right there. Bring this back in. And, oh, I did this too. I just... um took the ends and cut them at an angle just for something different. And we're going to go ahead and stick this direct to the card. And we'll do that right about here. And then we need some of this pumpkin pie. Whoops. the twine and I'm gonna cut off way more than what I need it's retiring right so <laughs> hopefully that'll be enough okay and then we're gonna wrap this around <clears throat> I have frogs in my throat this morning I don't know what the deal is or this afternoon still feels like morning to me 
Um, we're going to go ahead and tie this off towards the left side of the card and make a bow or attempt to make a bow. <laughs> Let's see what happens. See, you guys are watching, so of course this isn't going to go smoothly, right? Oh, that's not, well, that's not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my bow. One thing about me with twine that I noticed that when I tie, I must twist it because then my little loopy doos, these things, they get all kind of, I don't know, kitty wampus or something. That must be just the thing with me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and attach this with dimensionals. Put one there, one there. Straighten that up just a little bit. And notice I didn't put any in the middle here, so I could move this um, twine a little bit if I needed to adjust it like that. There we are. Bring our card base back in. And I think I put this, yep, directly on like so. That keeps wanting to scoot around. I probably should have tied it a little tighter. That's okay. It's all good. There we are. And that is card number two. What do you guys think of that one? It's a lot of fun. And like I said, um, there is also, I won't put it together. You've seen how I've done it. But now you have this sample as well, just using different colors, which I think both of them are equally beautiful. But tell me, which do you prefer? Do you prefer the pool party, <laughs> Coastal Cabana, or do you prefer the soft sea foam with the polished pink? I, can't, I, I like them both, but you know. All right, let's go ahead and let's do... I wasn't sure if I was going to do this card, but the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? Oops, my bow is coming off there. I'm just going to do this. Let's fix this first of all. Of course, I already trimmed this, so I don't have as much twine to work with. But that's not too bad considering being live on camera and not messing it up. <clears throat> All right, so this card is kind of cool. Um, I basically cased this from the catalog. I thought it was really neat. So this opens up like this, and then the whole card opens up like such. Super easy, just a matter of doing some layers. So the first layer is our card base, and this is polished pink, which is going away. Let's have a moment of silence. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> and I cut it at five and a half by eight and a half and I scored it four and a quarter. Inside the liner is four by five and a quarter. And we're just gonna put this guy in right now so I don't lose it or accidentally stamp on it. And then this piece of DSP is in the backside even pretty. It looks like a sunset. I love it. Um, this is cut at four by five and a quarter. So this is our first layer. We're gonna go ahead and just attach it right to the card base. Just like that. All right, and then I cut another piece of polished pink and this is cut at eight and a half by two and a quarter. Eight and a half by two and a quarter. And then I scored at four and a quarter inches. So that's going to be your little flappy do, like so. 
Um, I've also cut a piece of DSP for the front of this, and it is cut at, hmm, it looks like about one and three quarters by four. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put this on first. I wanna make sure I get some of these pieces out of our way. Um, oh, I already did this. <laughs> I kind of cheated, but I wanted to show you guys how to do this because again, um, mixing colors together on a stamp or when you stamp, like the last card, we cut out the piece. So I just thought I would show you something really quick. Um, this was something that I learned when I first started stamping and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Let me see, I need my stamp. And I'm going to take a piece, we'll use this on the back of this. Um, so what I did is I went ahead and I used my water-based markers. So these are our Marvy markers. I used the brush tip. Now something about these brush tips, just to know about them. Don't sit there and hammer into your stamp you're going to ruin your brush tip and then it's going to become frayed and it's gonna look like a bad hair day. Um, and you don't want that, right? Like, <laughs> that's not a good thing because then when you do wanna go ahead and color with it, it's going to be a hot mess, literally. Like, it woke up from the dead and it's not going to color like you want it to. Um, so, yeah, did you get that visual? like, you know, bad hair day, it's really bad. And I know sometimes some of my gals that come to stamp, they just don't realize and they just pounce on that, <laughs> on the tip of it. And I just cringe and cry and think, okay, it'll be okay. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm just coloring the smaller um, of the, the smaller words of the sentiment. Does that make sense? Yes. So anyway, this is a great way to add several colors to your stamps. And it's super, super easy. And sometimes I just forget to do these things. So I went ahead, I added the Polish Pink, and then this is Shaded Spruce. By the way, Shaded Spruce is going to stay, and I'm very happy. This is, I think, my favorite, well, no, okay. My second favorite green. <laughs> the other green, well, actually, I have two other greens. Well, one's more of a lemon. You're like, Dawn, seriously. But Lemon Lime Twist has returned, and that was one of my all-time favorites. And then we have Parakeet Party, or as I like to seem to want to call it, Parakeet Punch, which makes no sense. But in my head, it does. Okay, so... Now what you want to do before you stamp, you need to moisten it so you huff on it. I know, not the best thing to talk about on a live, huffing, but <laughs> So you're gonna moisten it with your breath and then you go ahead and stamp it down and there you go. There you go. So that's how I did that. Just for those who may be new. It's a lot of fun to do. Um, and that was, like I said, one of the first things I learned when I started to stamp and I just thought it was the coolest thing since sliced bread. Also, this piece here, I did cut in advance with the die. Um, what I did with this stamp, I'm gonna show you that as well. Have to take a bigger block. And I should have gotten this out ahead of time. I apologize. This is a big stamp. And what I did with this, we're just going to do this on more scrap paper so you guys can see it. I love the look of ombre. I think it's just kind of pretty. So I took half of my stamp. They can kind of see it here because it's stained it a little bit. But that's okay because even though a stamp is stained, what have I said before? It still stamps. It's a tool. Get over it, right? So I took the bottom half, inked it, and I say that with love, you guys. Seriously, um, I inked it with polished pink. And then I 
took pumpkin pie and inked up the top half. Isn't that pretty? And then you stamp it. Well, I missed the spot, but you get the idea, right? Isn't that cool? So again, another way to mix color on your stamps. So we're actually learning a few techniques in case you haven't tried it before, um, along with stamping some really pretty cards today. But as I said, I did this in advance. I've already pre-cut it with the die, so we're good to go there. So we have this piece. I also stamped in advance my trees and cut them out with the dies. So we're gonna go ahead and, <coughs> excuse me. Oh my goodness, I think I swallowed a fly. Ugh. And we're gonna go ahead and put this piece <laughs> inside the smaller flap. Oh my word, this live today is going to heck in a handbasket. This basic white piece is cut at two by four, I believe. Yep, two by four. We're gonna go ahead and attach this inside as a smaller liner on my flap here. And then I wanna go ahead and attach it all directly to the card. There we go. And I'm going to put it towards the left side here. And then I'm going to attach this onto the card. So I only really want, whoops, that didn't come out all the way. There we go. <clears throat> I really only want adhesive right in here. And that will be enough to hold it. It's just a card, we're not building a house. There we go. And then I took some of that twine from the three twine pack, and this is the garden green. We're gonna go ahead and tie a bow. I was a little excessive, but I wanted to make sure I had enough. That's me, Miss Excessive. <laughs> and there we go. Straighten out our bow. See what I mean? My bows, they, they're just, I don't know. It must be the way I handle when I tie things. It's just, the bow part comes out kind of weird. Okay, let's see if that will be better-ish, please. There we go, okay. And I'm going to trim that down. I like tails, but they don't need to be that long. All right. And then I'm going to take the sentiment that I cut with the um, stitched rectangle dies that are retiring. And we're gonna go ahead and put this, you know, actually I should have probably popped those up with dimensionals, but that's okay. It's all good. We'll do it with this. Now the last card I have for you guys is my favorite card that I've made with this suite. It's so cool. And it's the one that, um, oops, oops, oops. You know what, I'm gonna take this off. And you'll see why. It's all good. So you don't wanna have adhesive on the far left of this. <laughs> I almost glued that shut. That would have been awful. So it would not have opened. Okay, and then what I did is I just wanted to decorate it up a little bit more. So with a little bit more snail adhesive, we're gonna go ahead and that's gonna peek out just a little bit. And there you go, that is card number, what is it, three. Card three, woohoo! We're almost done, guys. Like I said, this last card I'm so excited about. And why does my camera keep moving? Urgh. 
There we go. Dang it. Okay, let's get started. This one is a little more involved, but I think you're gonna love it when it all comes together. So it's this card right here. Oh my word. There we go. Um, we need adventure again. Where did that go? Oh, there it is. We need that. And we're going to use several different ink colors. Um, get all my pieces here. This card looks a lot more difficult than what it is, but it did take a little bit of time as far as cutting it out, um, cutting out the pieces. Let's see here. Grab all of my inks. So on this card, I have used Early Espresso, Soft Suede, which is retiring, um, Daffodil Delight, and So Saffron, which is retiring. Crazy, crazy. And then also Pumpkin Pie. We're using Pumpkin Pie on it too. Okay, so with that, we don't need that stamp. We will need this, I think. Let's grab all of our pieces here. So first of all, I'm starting out with a card base. I cut it at four and a quarter by 11 and I scored at five and a half. The liner is basic white and I cut this at four by five and a quarter. We're gonna go ahead and put this inside the card, get it out of the way. There we go. And I'm gonna set this aside for now. Just don't let me lose it. <laughs> I've also cut a piece of, let me get all my notes here so I don't forget anything. Oh, excuse me. Um, I've cut a piece of white at three and three quarters by five and a half. So it's just going to peek off the sides, but it's gonna run the entire length of the card. I also used some scrap oops, of the um, soft suede cardstock, and I stamped, I did cheat, I stamped in um, early espresso. So actually we won't need to use that ink today because I've already done this. I stamped it twice, cut them out with the dye that's included in the bundle. I cut this little bicyclist out with, I think it is early espresso. Yeah, early espresso. It almost looks black. And then remember that really crazy looking dye that we had that I said is going to make hills? I've already cut those out. This again is soft suede. Um, this is crushed curry. And this is... Daffodil Delight, I believe. Or is it? It almost looks like soft saffron. Now I'm questioning myself. Oh my gosh. I should have taken better notes. But anyway, either way, you could use either color. Okay? <laughs> Goodness. Oh my gosh. All right. So, first of all, this piece was cut at three and three quarters. So the entire width of the white base and then I cut it to about know, three inches or so let me double check myself yeah it was about two and a half two and three quarter inches I got glue on there it's sticking to everything so what I want to do is go ahead and I'm going to use let me see here a blend blending brush if I can get it out of there we go and I think let's use this will be a fun contrast so it's gonna even pop a little more than it does on this card here so I'm gonna take a little ink by the way these are our newer blending brushes um, they're the 
smaller size, the fun size. You know, you have king size, like candy bars, and fun size. This is the fun size. Oh, that's kind of pretty. I think that'll give it more depth to it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and using my seal, we're going to do layer number one. Now notice I didn't put glue right up to the edge here. There's a reason for that because we're going to layer our other pieces. In fact, I don't even really want to mash that down yet, and you'll see why. And then we have this piece of crushed curry. And let's see here. What did I use? I used, I believe, pumpkin pie on this. Get this out of the way. And I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper for this. Ink off just a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and give this mountain a little extra color. See how that changed it just a little bit? Isn't that cool? I love that. Love it. And this again was pumpkin pie on, I believe, crushed curry. And then we're going to end up layering that piece. So you see how this is starting to develop here? And then we have this piece, which I think that this is so saffron. And we're going to take, let's see. This one actually has a lighter color on it. Now this is the big guy. This is the, the king size. <laughs> and I think what we'll do, we're gonna use Even though it's orangey, we're going to use Daffodil Delight. Ink it up. I'm almost running off the page, aren't I, where you guys can't see. Sorry about that. Okay, and notice again how I gave it just a subtle bit of color, right? And if we want to make it more intense, Ink up your brush again and just really go for it. Just play because it's just ink, right? You can't hurt it and it's only paper. So if you do make a mistake, just cut another piece. It's that easy. All right, so we have our mountain layers. So you notice I haven't stuck this down yet. I just want to make sure that we were good. And then also this piece is going to again layer right like that. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. Oh, I just love it. Whoops. And then I'm going to use, I think we'll use this one again, Daffodil Delight. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and we're going to glue these down. Get my seal. And notice again, I did not put any adhesive on the very top because we want to layer these. And this way it gives you a little wiggle room to move them around. Let's see here. Now what I'll probably do, well, I'm gonna try not to though. You could if, if you didn't get it just so, and if it really bothered you, like I, I don't know, perfection, that's when you buy a Hallmark card, right? We don't want that, we want handmade. But if you wanted to, after you add your layers, trim it so that it looks really nice and tidy. And you don't have those white spots that appear like mine are. But again, it's a handmade card, you know? People aren't gonna notice that. What they're gonna notice is that you made them a beautiful card. Okay, there we are. Isn't that cool? So now what we want to do is the sun. So I cut out, or actually I have a punch, and I think it was like a one and a half inch punch maybe. 
but you can make it bigger or smaller, depending. Now I didn't, you seen I didn't glue it. We're just gonna use this as a mask. Let's see, make sure I got the yellow out here. And I'm going to bring in my scrap piece. This could get a little messy. I'm gonna hold this in place. Oh, make sure you guys can see this okay. Yeah, a little more ink. Okay, I'm gonna hold this in place and I'm probably shaking the camera, aren't I? Am I getting you guys sick? You're like, oh, Dawn, stop. All right, there we are. So now, you ready for it? Oh, I love this part. Pop! Super cool. Super cool, right? Oh, I just can't help myself. <laughs> All righty. Put those aside. Put that back. So now we have our first layer all done. So then what I did is um, I went ahead and added this bicyclist, crazy mountain biker. And we're going to make it so it looks like he's popping a wheelie. So there we go. And then I'm going to take these two uh, pre-cut trees. And it was just for a matter of a little bit of extra something. Now this card, by the way, and I want to make sure I give her credit, uh, was done by Cindy Schuster, who is a concept artist at Stampin' Up. And I just absolutely loved it. I don't know a mountain biker, but I tell you what, this really caught my eye. And I was like, I have to make that card. I just have to. I'm sure you guys can relate, right? You see something and you're just like, man, that is so cool. I want to recreate that card. And just know, casing is not a bad thing. I love to case cards. All right. And we're going to set this off towards the left. See, you don't see the trees a lot, but it's a little extra something. And then I'm going to take this entire piece and we're going to adhere it to the card base. Just like that. Isn't that cool? How fun. So how many of you guys really loved that card? Like this was my favorite. I was so excited to show it. Um, but once again, we have our cards here. I'll show you again. And um, once again, if you are shopping today with me, that host code I will keep open until tonight. Until eight o'clock tonight. So if you are shopping, please use that host code till eight o'clock tonight. Otherwise, I'm going to change over to my April host code and my April host code will be on my blog, which is dawnscreativechalet.com. Now, where did I put the other card? <laughs> oh, I lost it. I'm losing it. I really am. I mean, there was this one, but Oh, here it is. All right. So I hope that I've inspired you a bit with the suite of product. Oh my gosh. I know I keep fiddling with this, but it drives me crazy. Um, it, it's awesome. It really is. Like I said, this was not on my radar at all. And I let the stuff that I had gotten. I actually earned this suite for free with my purchase. And I just let it sit. And I was like, I don't know what to do with it. Like, that's just really not me. I'm not a mountain biker. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not super outdoorsy. I mean, I like to be outside, but it's not like I sit there and run marathons in the mountains or anything like that. But I just think that this is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And there's so many more possibilities to it once I started to play with it, which doesn't that always happen, right? So if you guys have any questions on it, just reach out to me. I'll be posting pictures of this stuff. Uh, we'll also do a little vote. I think that'll be kind of fun. I always like to do that. Vote for the card, kind of like a this or that type thing. 
And um, yeah, so next week, one o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern time, I will be back for Sunday Craft Renew with Dawn. Also, the week after that, which I believe is the 16th of April, I will not be here. I will be on vacation, but I'm going to try to um, record something in advance. So you guys still have something to look at while I'm gone. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I appreciate you guys. You make Sunday so much fun for me. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, reach out. Or also, I'll have close-up pictures of these cards on my blog. So, Dawn's Creative Chalet. Alrighty. Thanks again, you guys. Have a great afternoon. We will see you next Sunday, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Bye-bye.